We're back. With a Pokemon challenge, no less. Let's talk for a second. I have a video that I've had filmed for about a month now. I started working on the video. Then my computer just absolutely crapped itself. It was taking 30 minutes for Photoshop to open. Premiere wouldn't even load. Already having low motivation for working on videos, this absolutely wrecked it even more. So, I did the unthinkable. I bought a new laptop. I've been saving for a desktop off and on for a while, but I really think a laptop is just the better move for me right now. You can debate the whole laptop versus desktop thing in the comments below. Let's talk about why this is the first video we've had in two whole months. Like, specifically this video, though. I thought I said that I was never going to do Pokemon challenges ever again. Well, I lied. I had largely dismissed doing these types of videos because I didn't really see much of a future in doing them, but they are easy to make, and they are just fun too. So maybe I can sprinkle them in a little bit here and there. Now let's talk about this video specifically. Eevee and Pokemon Yellow was the first video I ever had to get to a thousand views. I can remember vividly being at the Tennessee-South Carolina football game in 2019, standing next to my dad, and looking at the comments and views that the video was getting. I was on top of the world. So I thought, let's just stay reminiscent and go through Gen 2 with Eevee. Also, just to be a little more self-indulgent, I'm almost certain that I'm the first person to post a video showing that way through the Pokemon Tower past the ghost types was to use Bide. Other people have done videos doing this since, and I'm not saying that they saw it in my video, that's probably incredibly unlikely. But if you can find a video of someone beating Gen 1 with Eevee using Bide before my video was posted, let me know so I can squash this false fantasy I've got going on in my head. Let's focus on Eevee now. It's incredibly balanced and mediocre, with a slight proficiency in special defense. I'm honestly kind of surprised at how slow it is, though. For reference, Pikachu has a base speed of 90 compared to Eevee's 55. I knew Pikachu was faster, but wow. That's steep. Moveset is kind of intriguing in this run. Bite is now a dark move, so that will be useful. Bide is no longer a TM because they knew how overpowered it made Eevee. Mudslap is the only ground move it can learn, which I also learned from the last video that Eevee couldn't even learn Dig until Gen 3. I just associate Dig with Eevee for some reason, honestly not sure why. But Shadow Ball, since it's a physical move in Gen 2, this is going to be a very nice move to have. Return is obviously the most appealing move here, but Headbutt proves to be a very useful move too. Curse even gets some love, but we won't talk about that move for a good while in the run. The rules are the same for all of these videos, only using Eevee, no items in battle, no evolving, blah blah blah, all that regular stuff. For those of you that are happy I'm not on camera for once, which I'm pretty sure there are people out there like that, I was recently in a bike wreck and scuffed up my face pretty good. You can find a picture of it on Twitter if you really want to see it, but I want to take a break from the camera for just a little bit. I know some of y'all are happy about that. I swapped Cyndaquil out with Eevee so that my rival would end up getting Chikorita which I'm pretty sure is the bulkiest in terms of physical defense of the three Johto starters. I honestly have no proof of that. The rival really isn't that big of a deal in any of these runs, and just changing his starter doesn't really affect it that much either, which is kind of nice. Now, I don't do these hardcore Nuzlocks or whatever it is, but I definitely want to avoid overleveling. I went straight to Faulkner at level 10, right out of the gate. Pidgey only ever did about 3 HP every attack, nothing too damaging, and I knew Pidgeotto would be faster than me. It was just a matter of being able to take it down fast enough. I tried using Sand Attack a few times, using Tail Whip, and if I relied on critical hits, could have probably won at this level. But it was just a tad too bulky. I went through Sprout Tower to strengthen up, then took another crack at the birds. Pidgey went down in two hits because I either had a very low roll on the first attack or an insanely high roll on the second. And Pidgeotto just couldn't do anything bad at all now. I didn't just hit harder, but I could also take some hits too. I felt like I went from underpowered to overpowered in just three small levels. Maybe the battle would be more interesting if I had tried at an in-between level, but no one watches these videos for the exciting first gym leader battle. Bugsy's battle, which I think is one of the most intimidating battles because of how early you're battling a Scyther, was weird. Metapod did nothing to me, and I was afraid Kakuna might poison me, but I luckily made it through with only health being drained. Scyther led with Fury Cutter, 
naturally, and I leaned towards using Growl, but after a few turns, that Growl would do nothing. My first tackle did next to nothing. I'm gonna have to go grind a good bit, and then it, it missed. It missed the second Fury Cutter. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, Fury Cutter again, no big deal, quick attack, uh, yeah. Scyther did the absolute weirdest moves in this battle. Had that first Fury Cutter not miss, this might have gone very differently. I literally only used Tackle the entire battle too. The only thing I can think of that influenced its moves is that the AI thought it wouldn't have enough turns to set up Fury Cutter, so that's why it opted out for Quick Attack. And if I had missed, I would have fainted too. So, I'll take this one for sure. The rival battle before the Ilex Forest was kind of interesting. I taught EV Mud Slap, and the super effective move and accuracy loss absolutely handicapped Ghastly. Zubat did little damage too. Bayleaf though, who is the best Pokemon, don't at me, was tougher. I used three Mud Slaps to get tiny chip damage and accuracy loss, and it made a difference. Here's where I almost screwed myself. I used Growl twice as a nice buffer, but after the second one realized it was using Razor Leaf. A special move. So I wasted two turns, and I fell down to two HP, but those mud slaps paid off because it kept missing moves. This was entirely luck, no other way around it. Also, your rival is super emo. I hate the weak. Jeez, kid. Turn off Radiohead for a few minutes, okay? You know what time it is. At level 20, Clefairy is literally no problem. I could one-shot it with a critical hit with Headbutt, which I taught Eevee after getting it in the forest, and when it didn't, very, very rarely did it actually hurt me. Except for this one time, where it basically wasted me, but that was very much the exception. Miltank... <sighs> Miltank is just so much bulkier than anything else you've ever come across at this point in the game. And let me tell you what I've learned about this battle. You would think that accuracy lowering moves are the play. Well, they are for like seven seconds. I understand Pokemon AI a decent little bit, not nearly as much as I should. From what I can tell, if you use an accuracy decreasing move on Miltank, it will abandon using Rollout and opt for Stomp. This makes sense why use such a high risk, high reward move like Rollout that takes at least four turns to do massive damage, when you could just use Stomp that has 100 base accuracy and get the knockout, and if it doesn't knock out, get the chance of flinching. So my plan of attack had to be changed, big time. Also, it doesn't matter how low the accuracy is, this stupid cow lands Stomp almost every time. I even stopped multiple times just to make sure that Stomp isn't like Swift where it never misses. It doesn't for the record, this stupid cow is just really good at landing hits. Attract was absolutely awful too. There were times where I could have maybe gotten by with a win, but I got frozen by infatuation at least four turns in a row. I didn't want to be overleveled, and I didn't, but I had to hit level 23 before I could win. I kept trying at the other levels, it just wasn't worth it. I tried sprinkling in Growl some attempts before now, but it finally made a difference at this level. Clefairy had a three hit double slap, nothing big, but damage still taken. Miltank led with Rollout, so I led with Growl. I was able to hit twice, then used Headbutt. It missed the third Rollout, and Headbutt started doing a little less than a fourth of damage. Then it used Milk Drink for the first time. I just kept Headbutting. Then it used Rollout. I had a few choices here. I hadn't used Mud Slap any, so its accuracy was unaffected. If I had used Mud Slap, probably would have lost. It started using a severely weakened rollout because of Growl, and I took it to red health. But boy, that's a lot of red health. I didn't feel good about this moment. If it landed a rollout, I was done for. I contemplated quick attack, and boy, that was a good gamble. It took it down, and I beat Miltank with a much weaker Pokemon. I fear Stomp way more than I fear rollout now. Also, here's a random plug, I just wiped in a Nuzlocke against this cow that you can find on my second channel. This is also where I learned that accuracy lowering moves are not the play for this battle either. It was a very, very sad wipe. The rival battle in the Burned Tower was surprisingly painful, but only one aspect of it. The Haunter always used Curse to lead, and that Curse damage is significant against the rest of the team. Mud Slap is the only move I could use to handle Haunter and Magnemite as well, and it's just not very strong. I couldn't outspeed Curse the rest of the battle, so I battled the Kimono Girls, got Surf, then had a much better shot at taking down this team. And it was only two levels higher, nothing incredibly significant. 
but man, Morty is going to take a long time to beat if I can only use Mud Slap against him. Except, lol, I got Bite one level later. This made me feel so much better about the gym battle. But, his Gengar had other plans. Gengar likes to use Hypnosis and Dream Eater, and in my first crack at the gym, there was nothing that was going to wake up Eevee. Instead of just rolling the dice on Hypnosis missing, I went forward one route to the Moo Moo Farms and got the Mint Berry that wakes up your Pokemon from sleep if it's holding it. And that turned out to be incredibly unnecessary. It missed the first Hypnosis. I used Mud Slap twice just to increase my chances, then bit the Ghost. Which, if we're going to get critical about anything, how does Bite affect Ghosts? I feel like biting into a ghost wouldn't actually do anything. Especially the Ghastly Trio, that are mainly gas, and they're not really anything tan- Chuck was the battle I was least looking forward to, as I had a severe type disadvantage. But, I had zero problem with this battle. Primeape flinched, I used Mud Slap on Polyrath over and over just to be safe, and even then I only used a few Mud Slaps, so it's not like I went overboard. Polyrath likes to use Dynamic Punch anyways, which has low accuracy, so Mud Slap was definitely the play. And Headbutt with Eevee is a much stronger move than you really expect it to be. Jasmine was not tough, from a certain point of view. Her Magnemites would go down to just two Mud Slaps, and I used a Paralyze Cure Berry just in case Thunder Wave hit. And Steelix likes to use Iron Tail, which has lower accuracy, so I was set. But I had basically no way to do more than a tenth of damage at a time. So instead of just rolling dice all day, I went ahead and took down Price so that I could get a few levels, but still progress through the game. This Old Man, which is the title of an incredibly mediocre stick song, go listen to it though, it's super prog rocky, was no threat. Pile of Swine was only an obstacle because of its bulk. Price even used a Hyper Potion, and it still wasn't bad. I did use Mudge Slap a bunch, which made it stop trying for Blizzard and only use Fury Attack. So if I did get hit, it didn't hurt nearly as badly, but still. Go retire or something, old man, whatever old people do. Jasmine, jeez. This battle took forever. Here's basically how every single attempt went. Mud Slap twice on both Magnemites, lowering accuracy, making one of them miss Thunder Wave, and the other being negated because of the berry Eevee was holding. And Steelix and I just fought back and forth, using Iron Tail, which always seemed to land, never missing. Mud Slap would lower the accuracy, but Iron Tail kept hitting. But one time, Iron Tail missed every single time. But then my heart sank when Steelix landed in yellow health. Jasmine used a Hyper Potion, which made my heart sink. Felt like throwing a bottle of mustard, not gonna lie. I had replaced Headbutt with Return, but I still had Bite. Return was just slightly stronger than Bite, but Bite had the chance of flinching. So I kinda swapped back and forth between them. It never landed an attack though, and that's really the only reason I won. And I'm just glad it happened, so I wouldn't end up overleveling for the rest of my run. Now for the Radio Tower Takeover, and the rival battle in the underground was ridiculously annoying. But when I won, it was a breeze. Golbat likes to use Confuse Ray and Wing Attack. When I wouldn't get confused, Magnemite would use Thunder Wave. When Magnemite would miss, I would get hurt by Curse from Haunter. And Sneasel and Meganium couldn't do anything but chisel away at me, but I was usually so crippled at this point in the battle that Eevee just couldn't handle it anymore. But one attempt I didn't get afflicted by anything. Meganium even tried using Poison Powder, which never happened, probably because I was paralyzed or cursed at this point in the battle. I want to give more details on this battle, but it was just a really crippled run. Or the clean run that- what am I even trying to say here? Let's read the script again. Yeah, I typed this. I don't even know what the script is saying. I, I won the battle. Let let's just move on. I also picked up the free Eevee from Bill around this time. I like always making sure that I grab this Eevee. It's a nice little dude. There can be only one. Moving on ahead to Claire, because nothing else in this section is worth noting. So this battle was interesting. I now equipped Eevee with the pink bow to boost normal type attacks, and I basically could handle Claire with a high roll on return. But, but if you've ever battled Claire, you know that she loves to use Thunder Wave on every friggin' Dragonair. And one Paralyzed Cure Berry wasn't going to last through the whole battle. And being paralyzed against Kingdra wasn't worth it at all. So I did one single level of grinding. And I was able to take every single Dragonair down in one hit. So having full health against Kingdra made for a completely different battle. I don't love that I had to level up, 
but I wasn't just going to wait for a high roll, hope I didn't get paralyzed, and everything else random that can happen during this battle. Definitely far less painful than I thought it would be. Also, I just realized I never wrote in the script about naming Eevee. I named the last one Potential, I'm naming this one Promise. It's stupid. Let's move on. The final rival battle was incredibly uneventful. The only thing that was potentially dangerous was Magneton, who paralyzed me, but paralyzed Cure Berries. Those things are lifesavers. Seriously, the rivals Magnemite slash Magneton, Jasmine's Magnemites, Claire and Lance's Dragons, they all love to paralyze. It's pretty rough. And, having taught Eevee Shadow Ball, it hit those Ghost and Psychic types a lot harder. So I was at the Elite Four at level 55. I'm honestly not sure if this was the level I was expecting or not. I can think of a good case for having to be a higher level, but also understand if you think I'm slightly overleveled. That's not the point of this playthrough. Will's team was a pushover, but Slowbro definitely scared me. Executor set up barriers, so this already bulky Pokemon was very well set defensively, and it used Curse a few times to boost that already scary defense. But I used one Mud Slap, and that kept it from landing a Body Slam, and the barrier faded, letting me knock it out. Zatu hit with a Psychic, but it wasn't strong enough to take me out either. Wow, Koga though. Fortress is what I thought would cause trouble, and it did. It's not really the worst thing on the team, but it sets the stage for a lot of problems. One is it's typing, so I just can't knock it out quickly. I used Mud Slap to try to keep an explosion from happening, but it has Swift, so that's gonna land every single time. I started trying to hit it just as hard as possible, then it missed an explosion. My plan worked, but Muck proved to be my downfall. Between Minimize, Acid Armor, and Toxic, I had no health left to take down Crobat. So I had to retry Koga twice. This time, Fortress kept using Swift, so I just hit as hard as possible with a few bites to try to flinch it. And it worked. This time, I just hit Muck as hard as possible. And that worked. Then Crobat used Double Team. But I still got the win. It's not like it was a super stressful battle, but these are almost worse because they're not hard, just time consuming. Bruno. Bruno. I legitimately don't think Bruno has ever caused anyone, any trouble, ever, Gen 1 or 2, but using Eevee? Not easy. Here's the thing, at the level I'm at, I can't take Hitmontop down with one hit. So I either have to try to flinch it with Bite, then use Return, or just take the damage from Dig and move on. Hitmonlee always gets knocked out in one hit, but Hitmonchan hits first because it has Mach Punch. It's not devastating, but it's still dangerous because it's a super effective move. Machamp. This is the big one right here. One cross chop and I'm dead. Luckily, it has low accuracy. So I tried a few things. Good old mud slap, but that never really panned out. I'm not strong enough for a return to knock it out in one go. But one time it missed, so I just had to do it again. But Bruno used a hyper potion. No big deal. But I was out of returns. Shadow Ball, luckily, was enough to finish the job. I only had Onyx, and I had this in the bag. <sighs> I mean, that's just lame. What do you want me to say? So I battled again, used an Aether for return. Everything basically was a repeat until I got a crit on Machamp and just used Bite to break through Onyx's low special defense. Kudos, Bruno. You're not completely useless. And here's how close I was to beating Karen on my very first try. That's painful. So I was strong enough to beat down the second half of her team, no problem. But the first half of Umbreon, Vileplume, and Gengar is rough. Umbreon likes to either do Confuse Ray, which has a 100% accuracy chance of landing, and Sand Attack. And if you've watched any of my videos, Sand Attack is a touchy subject when it's used against me. Vileplume used Stun Spore, and Gengar will use Curse. Anytime there's any combination of these, the run is shot. That clip I showed earlier of me almost beating Houndoom, keeping just 2 HP after getting hit by Flamethrower and then missing my attack, that's because of the sand attack from way back in the battle. I was successful almost accidentally. I used Bite to try to flinch Umbreon, and then that happened. Then I could use Return, knowing it would survive. Fully expecting a Sand Attack or Confuse Ray. But it used Faint Attack, giving me the KO. 
Then I got a flinch on Vileplume, and Return was strong enough to knock it out. Gengar still cursed me, but at half health, Shadow Ball absolutely wrecked it. I just had to outlive the rest of the team. Murkrow was down in one return. Then, Houndoom landed a flamethrower, landing me in yellow health. But my friendship with Eevee gave Return the power to take down the Dark Dog. Not nearly as agonizing as Bruno was, but the agony had yet to begin. I had a feeling Lance wouldn't just be a simple battle, but I was hoping I would be wrong. Well, that hope was wrong. Lance was just as difficult as I expected, although he didn't just outright overpower me. Gyarados was a two-shot with Return, but it ALWAYS used Rain Dance. There was literally only one time it used Hyper Beam. It ALWAYS used Rain Dance. You would think the Dragonites that followed would use Thunder with Rain Dance, giving it a 100% accuracy. Although now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure only one of them has Thunder, but I'm not going to look that up at the time of recording this. But no, these Dragonites always went for Thunder Wave. I used the Pink Bow on Eevee the entire time to get that extra little bit of damage for Return, and I just couldn't bring myself to switch to the Paralyzed Cure Berry. Also, Thunder Wave has a 100% accuracy in Gen 2, but I'm almost certain there's some glitch in the code where status moves miss either 50% of the time, or they have the chance to just not even hit. I googled and checked, and I could not find anything on it. Genuinely. I know there's something messed up with the programming. I couldn't find it. So, Thunder Wave would miss every once in a while, and that was very nice. Every once in a while I would get lucky and the first Dragonite would miss, but the second one would land. And if I'm paralyzed, Aerodactyl is just not possible to be defeated. Unless if I can have about 10% health left. But then Charizard just wrecks me too. I couldn't do this at the level I was at. I grinded through the first members of the Elite Four over and over and over until I hit level 67. And I even swapped to the Paralyzed Cure Berry. I was going to take the attack decrease and hope that it would still be enough to win. Gyarados is knocked out, and the first Dragonite missed Thunder Wave. I felt good knowing the berry was going to take care of the second one. And then the second one missed. So I was battling Lance with a berry that had no use. So I felt very nervous about the rest of the battle. Aerodactyl was still faster than me, and it landed Hyper Beam, taking about a third of my health away. I used Shadow Ball instead of Return, so that there was no resistance, and on the recharge turn, it went down. Charizard just barely stood up to the power of friendship, having like 2 HP left. It hit with Flamethrower, dropping me to yellow, just below half health. Taking down Zard. Dragonite came out. Return dropped it below half health. I took a Hyper Beam, had 12 HP remaining, and got the win. Even though I was 17 levels higher than his strongest Pokemon, I did not feel like I overleveled for this battle. And I didn't just use Double Team the entire time either. And if you think I overleveled, 67 still leaves a lot of levels to be gained, so I'm going to count this as an undoubted success. Promise the Eevee is a great Pokemon. But we know how Gen 2 works. Still got more to do. And normally we jump all the way to the battle with Red whenever we get to Kanto, but there's actually two things that I want to point out before we get to that one. The first is definitely not very significant. Lieutenant Surge's Raichu looks beautiful, and I don't know if I've ever given this sprite the proper recognition it deserves. We're talking full-on Tanuki here. This is adorable. The second is the battle with Blue. Normally, every single Kanto Gym Leader involves me just using the Speed Up button and attacking with as much heat as possible, without having any trouble whatsoever. Blue can sometimes be an issue, but never something that can't be solved by just leveling up. Well, this time I didn't actually just want to level up, though. If he didn't have a Rhydon on his team, I think the battle would have been a completely different story. But Rhydon was so bulky, and I couldn't do anything to effectively take it down quickly. It took maybe five or six attempts. I was finally able to make it flinch using Bite, and avoided major damage. His other Pokémon could deal decent attacks on me, but individually none of them were too concerning. All in all, if you think I've been over-leveling, this battle shows that I really haven't. But now we're actually at the grand finale. The battle with Red. Okay. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's do a little different approach to this. Let's look at the first three Pokemon on Red's team, because I fully believe the order of his team, not necessarily the makeup, is what makes this team so disastrous. The Thunder Hurling Pikachu is purely annoying. It's not a matter of taking down Pikachu, it's a matter of not being crippled after you do take it down. Thunder obviously is just super strong. Even against high special defense, it's just a strong move, but it's low accuracy 
became one of my favorite things about the move in this case. That's what keeps it from being absolutely nasty. Charm is also a terrible move to get hit with, especially against Eevee. The two-stage attack drop is just not good. And to make attack even worse, Espeon likes to use Deflect, raising the team's defense, not just its own. And I don't know about you, I looked up what Deflect does. I always knew it boosted defense. It doubles the Pokemon's defense stat. I thought it just raised it two stages or something. That move is powerful. I'm going to start using that move from now on. Probably won't. I'm not very good at utility moves. Anyways, Espeon always uses Psychic if it doesn't use Deflect. And I don't have to explain that Psychic is one of the best moves just in Pokemon in general. And Snorlax, if you've lost some attack and Deflect is up, Snorlax is just a monstrous tank. And if you're a special attacker, no worries, it uses Amnesia, raising special defense by two stages. And Snorlax is not a pushover when it comes to its own attacks. The last three starters are just good too. Venusaur typically uses Solar Beam, but if it sets up Sunny Day, that just boosts Charizard's Flamethrower. And that is a combination for disaster. Blastoise is just tanky. It hits hard. That's really all there is to it. So in terms of what I want to show here, boy, there's a lot. To start, I went into the battle around level 75, and it just wasn't going to work. That's it. There's no point in staying here, going over this over and over. I changed my moveset a little. I went and picked up Curse. The speed drop is not very attractive, but raising defense and attack is very nice. The only downfall to raising my defense is that Snorlax is really the only physical attacker on this team. I also completely forgot about leftovers as a held item this entire time. There's no way to not take damage against Espeon, and instead of wondering how can I get health back, I remembered there's an item that just does that. And here's an attempt where I just, I just need to show how slow, in real time, it takes to take down Snorlax with one shot. We're talking Gen 4 slowdown. This is just awesome. So here's how my game plan went. Use Mud Slap a few times against Pikachu. Getting hit by Charm is almost guaranteed, but it does have that chance of missing as a status move. Same for Thunder, but using Mud Slap increases those chances, so I can boost my attack and defense at the expense of my speed. Even if I get hit by Thunder, I can recover a good bit of health with the turns passing. If I get paralyzed, I have to restart. The speed drop obviously isn't bad, because I'm dropping that myself but the chance to just be frozen for a turn is the real issue here. Every once in a while, I could make it to Blastoise, but my health was so low from Psychic and Flamethrower that I really couldn't do anything. With my health that low, it also opted straight for Surf instead of setting up Rain Dance because I was easily beatable at that point. I started to change my attempt by stalling against Snorlax and trying to get health back at that point in the battle. This seemed like the play to go for, but Every once in a while, more times than it should have happened, Snorlax got a critical body slam, and that literally crushes poor Eevee. There were a lot of close attempts that I could talk about here. Obviously, since I have this video posted, I won the battle. And I did win at level 80, without using Double Team. Yes, I used Mud Slap, but this left me open against the other Pokemon in the battle. I only used it on Pikachu and Snorlax. This isn't just using Double Team to reduce. This isn't just using Double Team to reduce the risk of injury. Is there any moral victory here? Well, I'm a grown man playing Pokemon. There's no moral victory to speak of at all. Here's how the final attempt went down. Four Mud Slaps. Pikachu started with Charm and landed a Thunder. During this time, I used five Curses, getting my attack stat from down two to up three. Also during this time, I avoided every other Thunder. Return took it down. My health had basically returned, and normally Espeon only uses Deflect if I have an attack boost of one or two stages. But this time, at three stages above regular, it uses Deflect. And with two attack boosts, I normally knock it down to red. But with three, I was strong enough to one-shot it, and not risk taking a Psychic. I didn't even mention the possibility of a special defense drop from Psychic. That was always miserable if that ever happened. With Deflect still up, I couldn't take down the tank, even with three attack boosts, so I used four mud slaps. I didn't even get through all of them, and the body slam still hit a concerning amount of times, way more than it should have. After reflect faded, recovering health, I used curse once more, took a body slam, then returned it to death. 
I had a great chunk of health. I felt good. I thought about using my other two mud slaps on Venusaur just in case it used Sunny Day and I would have to stall waiting for Charizard. But it used Sunny Day, I went for return, I felt lost. But oh man, it's a good thing I didn't reset. Let's take a look. Charizard used Flamethrower, boosted by Sunny Day, but I had never been at this point in the battle with this much health. It knocked me down to yellow health at 47. I took it down no problem, then realized Blastoise was going to have to deal with Sunny Day. If it tried to set up Rain Dance, I had a free hit. At 60 health, I could maybe survive Surf with Sunny Day weakening it. I just went straight for return, and Blastoise went for Blizzard, and Blizzard's notoriously low accuracy came to the rescue. It missed. I used return and won. I beat Red at level 80 with just an Eevee without using Double Team. Wow. Y'all, I'm not gonna lie, I have missed doing these videos. I like doing the other videos too, in fact I think I like doing them more. But these are just very fun, I enjoy narrating things like this. Here's the compromise I'm gonna make with y'all. I'm still gonna do these videos from time to time, but I'm also gonna make sure that I prioritize the regular videos. And since I have a new laptop that is much stronger than my old computer, I'll be able to hopefully make these videos at a much faster pace. Cross-country season just ended, so as a coach, I now have a whole lot more free time. Also, let's try to stream some while we're at it. I know I say that like every other month, but now I have a computer that can do that. So, we'll just figure that out. Here's the takeaways for today. You can beat Pokemon Crystal with just an Eevee. And, you don't have to be at level 100 to do it either. I did not expect that at all, but I think that's really, really cool. If you like the video, make sure you like it, leave a comment, subscribe, do all that regular stuff, follow me on Twitter, all those other places. Y'all, I'm just so glad to be back making a video. I hope y'all have a blessed day, and until next time, see you later.